Revelation 12 is another very interesting set of allegories. It's broken up into odd patterns, so while I'll address the whole chapter, I'll have to skip around a bit. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in birth pain, as if she was about to give birth. The woman clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet is the key to this allegory. Having both the sun and the moon in the same picture means we may have another eclipse reference. Back on the NASA website, there was another eclipse on March 20th, 71 CE. It went through Greece, but a partial eclipse could be seen in both Rome and Jerusalem. Using the star maps on Formalab, I was able to reconstruct the position of the stars, sun, and planets during and after the eclipse. Since Jerusalem was destroyed about six months before the event, I'm going to set my location for Athens, Greece, and see what unfolds. Maximum eclipse time would be about 9.30 a.m. GMT, or about 12.30 in the afternoon in Greece. This is what the eclipse would have looked like. In the center of the sky, the Andromeda constellation sits with her feet toward the eclipse. There are other female constellations here, but Andromeda is the only one with her feet on the moon. The crown of twelve stars is a bit vague, and is probably talking about constellation Cepheus, a king with a crown. The pregnancy is probably referring to the sun being eclipsed. But the crown of twelve stars and crying out in birth pain are also a part of another allegory, and I'll address that in a moment. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its head. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth, so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. This is the same seven-headed beast in chapter 13 and 17, however, this time it's in the stars. Notice that this beast closely resembles the Hydra, which was killed by Hercules in Greek mythology. Moving ahead a few hours, we get the coolest picture of constellation Hydra that I'm ever likely to see. Constellation Hydra sits just below the planet Mars, and though it didn't sweep a bunch of stars from the sky, Constellation Hydra is very large and encompasses many stars. At this time, its tail still hasn't finished appearing. Thanks to its relative position to Mars, we have a red dragon. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter, and her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness, to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1260 days. Most of this is part of the second allegory, but I wanted to go ahead and mention two things. First, the woman simply vanished when the sun came out. The birth is probably an allusion to the sun reappearing and the stars being invisible. The other illusion in this verse is 1260 days, which on a lunar calendar is about 42 months or three and a half years, and is probably referring to the first Jewish-Roman war. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, the ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and the angels with him. Now there is no constellation for Michael. However, two things that I've noticed so far indicate that this entire allegory was taken from a Greek source. First, if you've seen Clash of the Titans, you know who Andromeda is. Andromeda is the woman chained to a rock that Perseus has to save from the Kraken. The second character in this whole allegory is the Hydra. The Hydra was killed by Hercules as part of his twelve labors. Since the author adapted these constellations for his own use, it only makes sense that I'd be looking for either Perseus or Hercules. About 12.30 in the morning in Athens, Hercules appears to destroy the Hydra. Though Perseus also makes an appearance this night, it only makes sense that it would be Hercules killing the Hydra. By 4.30 in the morning, Hydra has hit the ground and Hercules dominates the center of the sky. The great dragon was indeed hurled down to earth. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness where she would be taken care of for a time, times, and a half time out of the serpent's reach. By 6 a.m. in Greece, Andromeda reappears, and this time she's not alone. In this star chart, Achilla makes an appearance. Achilla is the eagle constellation. The hydra goes to the earth, and the woman he is after takes up the wings of an eagle. Then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away from the torrent, but the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of its mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's commandments and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Backing up a few hours, the Eridanus constellation appears. This constellation is a river, and at this point at night it is seen pouring onto the earth from the general direction of the Hydra constellation. 
Every object and action in this chapter shows up in the stars around the eclipse of 71. The only loose ends here are dogmatic. Verses 10 through 12 usher in the birth of Christianity. The crown of 12 stars is probably the 12 tribes of Israel, and the woman is an allegory of the birth of Christianity out of these tribes. The author doesn't have these dates, and in following chapters, the author seems to be placing the event before the destruction of Jerusalem. So while there's no guarantee that the author believes Jesus was born after the destruction, this allegory does seem to be referencing the birth of, at the very least, Christianity. One last thing in this chapter, the author mentions the serpent, dragon, and hydra. He claims that they're all the same thing, but all three of these constellations show up this night. Revelation 12 is the eclipse of 71 CE. This chapter, combined with Revelation 6, seems to be strong evidence of what early Christians thought of Christianity and Jesus. It ends up being difficult to tell where reality ends and where legend begins, but it seems to be obvious that Christian theology was at least in part derived from the stars.